volumetric lighting can be a great way to enhance a scene. Use it to add depth or draw the eye of the audience to something important or just to simply add interest in its own right. Before we dive in, let's take a look at my usual procedure for lighting an interior scene. It took me a long time to realize that since we're making a movie strictly of computer graphics, it's all just a magic trick, not reality. When I studied visual effects for filmmakers, my eyes were opened to the fact that all motion pictures are a magic trick. Visual art in motion intended to captivate an audience. Let's keep that in mind as we approach lighting this interior scene that I bought from Daz 3D. We'll be starting with this basic starter scene, which is available for download on my website. I like to save base scenes like this so that the main scene settings that I use most often are already set up and ready to go. The first thing I do for interior scenes like this is to delete my default lights from the scene and get a good angle with the camera. Next, I look for anything within the scene that might be meant to cast light and also explore the shaders tray for things that might glow. Look around a bit and figure out where light should be coming from. I also locate the texture folder for the product and explore that for what kinds of maps I have to work with. In this case, I'm looking for anything that is intended to make something glow. An emission map, illumination map, that sort of thing. It's usually pretty easy to spot them. We can see that it doesn't apply in this case. Instead, Soulless Empathy simply uses an emitting shader applied to specifically created material zones. So I'll just copy the color settings in both of these shaders to the glow channel in Carrera. A quick test render shows that we're good to go. Instead of placing a 3D light everywhere there's supposed to be a light emitted, my first job is simply to light up the environment. So let's start by adding a simple shape light. In this case, I'll leave it a ring shape, scale it down, and drag it high enough to fill the scene with light, and then set it to barely make it to the farthest reaches, if it even makes it quite that far. And graduate that edge down according to how I want the light to behave. Less fall off for a more condensed sort of light. Otherwise, a nice high fall off to appear more evenly lit from the center part of the room. For this single shape light to work, I'm also using a simple trick in the setting scene ambient light. We have to be careful using this or it can make things too light where they're supposed to be dark. I'm building this scene as a backdrop painting so the main subject will not be affected by this. The base scene download that I mentioned before has this ambient light set by default. For this scene however I lowered the value to 2. Let's stop here and add some volumetric lighting. First of all, our lighting has to be coming from somewhere. If such a thing doesn't exist in your scene, try to think of where light might come from behind the camera casting into the scene over your shoulder. We don't need a model to represent this, just our imagination that knows that it's there. We'll add a spotlight and this is the one that we'll use to actually cast light into the scene. The volumetrics will end up just being an effect. So with this light, we're concerned with how the light hits the scene and the sharpness of the shadow that it casts. We also don't want it to hit the main actor, so if it crosses the actor's path in the scene, we need to get that light behind the character.
Okay, that's good so far. Now we'll duplicate this light and use the universal manipulator to drag it directly back from the original spotlight. If your effect is coming from behind your shoulder, you don't have to do any of this part. But the light cone itself, the effect, comes from a single point. So if we can see the origin of that cone light, we really see a sharp point. It looks like a shape, an object. We don't want that. We're going to use these setup guides to help us set this up correctly. So I set the angle according to how I want the effect, which most of the time for me is actually different from the original illuminating light. Now I use the edge of the guide to help determine how far to move the light like that. Now let's go into the effects tab, scroll down to the light cone settings, and I have a default muscle memory that I use for setting these things up, which goes like this. Fall off around the 30-ish range, turn on fog, turn on 3D shadows, and check this invert box if I need the effect to begin at the origin of a mesh, like ours is here. Let's have a look. Well, there it is. It's not great. In this case, I need to increase the fall off, make the color more subtle, and lower the intensity. But we still need to change things up a little. To make this a lot better, we'll hop into Howler and make an animated gel for the fog. Howler is the perfect place for me to make these things. It's a square texture I'm after here, and it's only obscuring the brightness of our light, so it doesn't need to be huge. So let's just make an 800 by 800 square for this example. We're working with a circular shaped light, so I'll make a circular selection and then blur that selection down. I'll go for a fairly high value for this one. Since I'm making fog, I'm just going to render some plasma noise go for a bit higher scale, then just click the scale scrubber to cycle through until I like the effect I'm getting. So now I'll switch to the swap buffer and repeat that. Okay, and then switch back to my main buffer again. For our animated scene, I'd like to have an animated fog gel. So let's make a 300 frame animation to get 10 seconds at 30 frames per second. This effect will be so subtle that you really don't need to do this. But this sort of moving effect can look better than simply altering the light over time. Once we have an animation in Howler, we get a timeline bar. Now click this timeline button to browse various effects that we can keyframe throughout the animation. I'd like to make the fog image in my main buffer move around a bit like fog or smoke. So I'm going to use pool displace. I'll start by getting a feel for the effect. Let's not get too crazy with this. I'll start Start with very little effect, but where it's already making a difference, and set a keyframe. I'll scrub to the end and add another keyframe to bring it back to these settings at the end. Somewhere in the middle here, I'll make some changes like so. And make a keyframe one more spot along the timeline, make another tweak. Set another keyframe and I'm ready to apply the effect. Notice here that I can store this for undo or I can opt out to save on memory. Sometimes I go for the undo ability but not this time. 
This thing is so easy to make, it's not a big deal if I have to start over. Okay, let's apply this. And here's what we've done so far. This time I'm going for composite with swap and we want to mix the buffers. Let's keep this at zero at the start and make sure it's at zero again at the end. And in the middle here, I'll drag this up. Sometimes I might go all the way up. Other times I prefer to just feel my way just about there and set another keyframe. Let's run this and see how it looks. Cool enough. Now, I know from experience that this is not going to show as a tremendous difference to our volumetric light. But this is a great example on how to animate textures within Howler. But just to try and add a little bit more to this, why don't we give it a quick rotate? Uh, not a quick rotate though. We're going to rotate it about 90 degrees over its entire 10 second span just to add a little extra movement to our fog. So to do that we're going to go back into the timeline here and under transform click transform. Now on the bottom here we have rotate so we'll set a keyframe at zero while there's no rotation. And at the end here, we'll just give it a uh, about that much and set another keyframe and apply that. Very good. Okay, so we could do more with this. We could uh, animate the contrast, uh, brightness, we could change the color, we could do all kinds of different things. But let's just export this out as an AVI and add it to our light. We can also opt for an image sequence if we prefer that. Okay, and now back in Carrera, we simply add this map to our FX light. I'm going to add it to the main spotlight as well. When we add an AVI or image sequence to the light gel, it automatically plays through frame for frame. So we don't need to do anything more at this point to make that happen. Let's do a test render. Yep, see? Much better. This interior is circular and is centered in our scene. So to make a second set of lights, I'll insert a target helper object and parent these lights to it. Now I duplicate that and in this case rotate the thing 90 degrees and I'm aligned with the next light in the ceiling. I like to edit at least the effects light to make it a bit unique from the other. And let's look through our render camera here. Since this seems to be a hero light, I'm going to make this one a bit more bright and colorful, but only a little. It's looking pretty good. Further tweaking can really enhance a scene like this. When I have glowing shaders in my scene, I like to turn on the aura for that model. 
The glow of an aura really helps to set things up for more convincing light emission within the scene. Now, I know many artists dislike using this effect, so use it if you like or simply leave this step out. But I do like how it helps to fill a portion of the surrounding area with the color of the emitted light. Okay. Here's the end result of this quick demonstration tutorial. I hope I've inspired you to dig in and have a play with this stuff. It's a lot of fun and it looks great, in my opinion. Thanks for joining me. Keep an eye on my website at dartanbeck.com, where I'll be adding articles to further assist with these sorts of things. Future tutorials will include rendering the main content for a scene like this, keeping it all organized, and blending them together within Howler as well as Infusion. So stay tuned and happy rendering. <laughs>